Hey guys, Steve Blair. Today we got to look at the hill. Tier 4 American Premium Destroyer just launched Brady McMordoff. It's a Mordoff build, which is a Halloween American Destroyer commander, similar to Bill Halsey, who's kind of the guy that I've been using uh, basically since the game launched. Ring Domination Mode is the match here. We're going to be checking out the hill. What is it exactly? Now, it's pretty similar to the Tier 4 uh, U.S. gunboat Farragut. Now, experienced destroyer players usually tend to like the Farragut quite a bit. I think it's quite a, a strong ship, especially for its tier. Uh, why is that? Well, you have very strong guns, quick reload, hard hitting, and the AP close range blistering. Okay, especially if you get broadside uh, cruisers, tier 3, tier 4, even some of the tier 5s, you can absolutely shred them. In fact, Farragut's always been a good option if you ever have a mission that says go out there and get some uh, citadels for yourself that's a good option to do because a lot of the lower tier cruiser players when they get in the hang of the game they will just sail around broadside anyways the citadels on those ships stick way up and there's no armor okay so your destroyer guns that rapidly reload uh you can pick those things to you know pieces <laughs> so it's always a good option hill wouldn't be a bad option either uh but the reload is about a half second slower on the hill than the farragut now for the Farragut and the, you know, the majority of these U.S. and destroyers, the guns are kind of the strong suit. So here we're losing a little bit of performance on the guns with the hill, but we're getting a little bit better performance with the torpedoes. Note we got a centrally located launcher and one launcher dedicated per side, and the reload quite a bit better. 20 seconds, uh, I think, is about the difference between them, and it's, you know, significant. We're talking about... a 25% uh, reduction, give or take, in the reload on the hill. So I actually think the hill, for that reason, might be even more appealing to uh, newer players or even destroyer players in general who uh, favor torpedoes more. I still think you're kind of missing the main idea of the, you know, the American destroyers if we're really focusing on the torps, at least, you know, not including like Benham or something like that. But for most of them that play like the Farragut or anything in that line you still the guns are where it's at right so the guns are still good on here uh, but they're not quite as good as the Farragut which is the main strength of the Farragut so keep that in mind but better uh, reload for sure now the torpedoes on the hill anemic I think it's 58 or 56 knots and it's down from 58 on the Farragut which is already pretty slow and that's kind of the trade-off especially with these low tier American destroyers you only get you're good short range up and down the line uh they're going to be very slow they do have great detection okay so they're going to pop up right next to the enemy before they even spot them making them hard to dodge but getting them on target difficult because of the slow speed and these low tiers think uh tier two presumably tier three tier four even the tier five mayhem short range torpedoes and that means you really want to be using them defensively and you can see what we're doing right here uh, we're using the smoke, we're attacking with the guns, and then when these ships push in and threaten us, that's when we kind of fire the torpedoes at them, hoping to defend ourselves that way. Uh, you don't want to be rushing <laughs> these battleships. I mean, that's a very, very common play. It's common up and down the tiers, but it's especially when you see these lower-tier American destroyers and they're not being played uh, that successfully, in my opinion. They're trying to rush these guys and torp them point-blank range. Okay. And... You know, the newer you are, the more like you are to think. All right, I got this puny little destroyer. I killed this big bad battleship. What a great play. Well, in reality, uh, destroyers are far more valuable than battleships, without a doubt. And especially in domination mode here, where we need to be using our uh, concealment and trying to capture and control bases. Uh, that makes the destroyers far more valuable for your team so you don't want to be trading your destroyer in a one ship to one ship trade with a battleship that's usually in most situations going to favor uh the battleship's team rather than your own so uh you know that's just adds to the difficulty of using uh these lower tier americans just because the torps are uh short range and until you understand okay these are for defensive purposes for the most part only uh you might be tempted to make some bad plays just to force the torps on them. So don't feel like you have to be using them all the time. 
Uh, but no with the hill. Basically, whenever you're going to need them, they should be ready to go because the reload is quite quick. Here, now, we lost about two-thirds of our HP in that sequence. Okay, we're getting pushed by battleships, pushed by the Farragut. Uh, getting spotted by the plane, I think, a little bit. So, we got some shots in on us. And that's when we got out of there, we got behind cover. And that's how the play style has to change. You have to be keeping an eye on your health, no matter what class of ship, but especially destroyer. And now we're kind of, rather than kind of really aggressively trying to capture that cap and fight, you know, up close and personal. Now we're resorted to uh, using cover, uh, being able to disengage very quickly. This play is going to be a little risky here. <laughs> this is kind of what I was talking about earlier, forcing these torpedoes in on there. But I'm noting his guns aren't pointing at us, and I think he's probably, you know, he's shooting at someone else. He's not really paying attention to me, even though he could be. Uh, so technically this is not a good play, forcing those torps. But what the heck, we tried it anyways, and then uh, once it looked like he might be turning the ship to engage us, then we sped off, launched the second set defensively just in case he does hit the brakes and then move forward. Uh, that'll slow him down in his tracks. And then we're kind of back in the middle using this cover here. We got our guy on uh, the northeast cap, and this destroyer actually is going to outscore us this game. Uh, he's doing a great job too. He's actually capturing these bases. We were trying to get A, but they kind of by and large, won that side. We were forced off there, lost two-thirds of our health, and now we're kind of just trying to, let's reset this base. We'll see if we can get some spotting. We got a smoke ready to go here. I can just pepper these old battleships here and just keep tapping them, maybe set some fires, but prevent them from actually capturing this base. We're going to have three bases. They're not going to actually control any of them at that point in time, and then we can just kind of choke them with the score. Even if they manage to come back a little bit on ships, uh, then we can try and try and uh, make sure that we're going to pull off the W just by uh, controlling that background scoring. So you can see that's kind of the strategy. Whenever we're feeling threatened, then we can just go ahead and pop the smoke. And we want to kind of make sure, look at the map before we use that smoke. Does it look like our teammates are going to be in position where they're going to have a line of sight on these guys for a while? You'd also maybe want to lock your guns, check those guys' health, make sure, okay, these guys aren't going to get killed in one shot here. Because these smokes, we get two of them. They last for two minutes, they're extremely valuable, and this is really when you're going to get a lot of your damage with these uh, th American destroyers. So you don't want to be wasting those smokes, uh, so be sure you're checking the map. It's, <laughs> it's pretty disappointing it happens to everyone, but, you know, you plop down your smoke, then all of a sudden everyone on the red team disappears. Oh, I'm the one who was spotting them, and nobody on my team uh, is going to step into that role. Well, then we just wasted the consumable, which once again is very valuable. Uh, for us. Once we're out of those smokes, then we're kind of forced to fire behind islands, which, once again, that requires our teammates to uh, be spotting for us. So, that's kind of the idea with these American destroyers. I think the hill, I think it's a good ship, certainly for a tier 4. If you're in the market for tier 4 premium, not a bad option. Okay. Um, tier 4's got some pretty good premiums. It's got some clunkers in there as well, but I'd, I'd put this on the better half of the spectrum for sure. Again, I think this might be a little bit more newer player friendly than, uh, you know, the Farragut in its raw form just because, you know, the torpedo is a little bit better and newer players, they're really trying to focus on the torps a lot of times. Uh, but you can see here throughout this game, we got three torpedo hits. We got 150 some odd uh, hits plus with the main guns. And there's the double for our teammate there. Great job. And you always want to, if you have any charges left in your radio, if you haven't been spazzing out the whole time, uh, give him a good job whenever you see that double strike because that is the ace in his cap. All right, so pretty good job there. Uh, like I say, he's going to actually outscore us by a little bit. We will uh, proceed to hunt this carry down for a little bit, though. And I think we'll actually get the high caliber ourselves. So that's kind of what I'm thinking on this thing. You know, if you, if you like the Farragut for sure, would you like the hill? Well... Yeah, you'd still enjoy the hill. Um, it is a premium version, so number one, you can get your premium supplies missions done, and you can get some enhanced scoring in terms of credits, XP, all that. Uh, but just going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Farragut and the hill, if I'm going to play one or the other, I'd probably just play the Farragut, because I think that's where it's at. The guns, once again, kind of the main thing that the American destroyers have going on for them. And <laughs> curiously, this guy's like flying around me here. I assumed when I was playing, he was trying to access my side, so I was like, okay, I'll be prepared to 
uh, try and dodge those, but I think he's, <laughs> he's just trying to go around me for some reason, uh, which is kind of the antithesis of what he should be doing, be doing at the moment, especially if you're trying to protect yourself, by the way, because I'm the guy who's going to spot you if anyone is going to spot you. But anyway, uh, getting back to my point, you know, but I the ferret gets so good to begin with that, like, degrading the guns on this on that slightly to this performance it's still pretty good gun performance we do get a little bit more health i can't remember if i mentioned that uh maybe i didn't even mention any of the differences besides the guns uh better turns on the farragut as well but better speed on the hill and you get 0.1 uh kilometers better concealment on this so that's not really noticeable um but you got your extra hp on the hill you got your quick loading torps with the uh, central launcher as well. And then the guns are just going to be better on the Farragut. So you can kind of say to yourself, what's my play style? Am I a little bit more focused on the torps or the guns? If you're more into the guns, then the hill would probably be more comfortable for you than the Farragut. If not, if you like to play the, you know, the sheriff play style with the American destroyers, we're out there capturing bases, killing destroyers, then the Farragut's going to be the top dog. And, you know... It's just going to be slightly better at getting those Citadel shots and the broadside paper tier 4 cruisers uh, just because the reload's a little bit better. So, I don't know. I, I'd say you can go... You can't really go wrong with either your comma, Celets, or whatever he's trying to back up here. You can <laughs> see he's on the edge of the map. Um, a lot of new carrier players you see that backing up like this. I mean, maybe that's what they would want to do. But if you don't know, you can go to the main map screen where you hit the button in the center of the controller pull that up then you can auto steer your uh, carrier just by selecting which square on the map you want to travel to and then hold down whatever button on the bottom it says to do that so that's a look at the hill for you guys hopefully you did enjoy it if you did please hit the thumbs up new to the channel consider subscribing lots of world of warships coming all the time questions comments link below a lot of deer from me and we'll see y'all later peace